Well, hello everybody and welcome to another wonderful webinar with Chef AJ. I am Gustavo Tolosa, the webinar host for Chef AJ. I also host the weekly webinars with Dr. McDougall and Dr. Uh, Doug Lyle. And I am super excited to be here. Many of you know me already. I've met you in person in different uh, lectures and uh, uh, seminars and you know that I'm a professional musician, a concert pianist, and I would love to visit your city sometime to give a concert, talk about plant-based eating, living. So if you're interested, just drop me a line and maybe I can plan a concert somewhere where you live. So tonight, this is a very, very just fun treat to have Chef AJ for about an hour just for us talking about how we can eat healthfully no matter where we go and while we're traveling or if someone invites us to their home or if we're in a hospital, you know, anywhere. There are ways to eat healthfully. So we want to thank you, Chef AJ, for giving freely of your time and we're excited and ready to go. So how are you doing today? Hey, or thank you. Hey, Gustavo. I'd like to interview you sometime on one of these webinars. Maybe you can teach us how to be a concert pianist. Uh, right. I can teach you how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb or something. <laughs> or Chopstick. Huh? So, right. <laughs> it's, I'm trying to keep up with the feed and say hello to everybody, but it goes so fast. So Gustavo, um, what we're going to talk about is not just travel, but how to eat healthfully anywhere. And I've really think I've narrowed it down to a pretty good system because, well, first of all, I've been vegan for 40 years. And so I've always assumed that I have to be in charge of my food if I want to make sure I have the kind of food I want. I was raised right. culture. I have food allergies and I've been vegan since 1977. So I never expected the world to cater to my every need. And that's one of the things you have to understand that the world is not set up to feed healthy people healthfully. And once you get that through your thick head, you'll realize <laughs> that there's some strategies you can do so that you can have healthy food anywhere you go. So I'm going to show specifically how I travel and then I'm going to talk about what's on this whiteboard. February 2nd, 2011, my book Unprocessed came out. And the very first job, speaking job I had after that was at the McDougal uh, Advanced Study Weekend. And I didn't realize that when you had a book, people all over were going to ask you to speak. And I literally have been on the road for close to six years, probably 40 weeks a year. So I think I've mastered travel. If I had known I was going to be traveling, I would have written a book specifically about that. But instead, I'm going to tell you everything I know in probably under an hour. So I'm going to show you what I personally bring so that I can eat healthfully. And one of the things that's crucial to my success is bringing my Instant Pot electric pressure cooker with me everywhere because I cannot assume that there is going to be the kind of food that I eat. Because remember, I'm not just vegan, guys. I'm whole food plant-based. I don't eat sugar, oil, salt, or gluten. I'm unprocessed. I'm allergic to soy and black pepper, have lots of food allergies. So I can't expect that the food is going to be the way I need it. And now with thanks to Lyft and Uber, it's never been easier to get healthy food. In the past, I would have to rely on a very expensive cab maybe to get me the food I need, but with Lyft and Uber, you know, less than 10 bucks, I can get to the nearest store and set myself up in my hotel room or my guest house. So here's what I carry on the plane. Now, you know, you're always allowed two carry-ons. Oh, this is heavy, but this is one of my carry-ons. And what this is, this is a beautiful sack roots bag that was given to me. It's vegan, non-leather, by my good friend Linda Middlesworth, who's the owner of the V-Dog Vegetarian Dog Food Company. And believe it or not, in this bag, which does fit either in the overhead or under my seat, is my pressure cooker and my cooler. Now, one of the things I learned is that don't request the aisle seat as much as you might like it, because the room that goes under the aisle seat is smaller than the portion that is in the middle seat or the window seat, at least on the airline's eye fly. Unless you're flying first class, it doesn't matter. But when you do the aisle, for some reason, there's less room to stick your bag under. So request middle or window, or if you can do business class or first class. But this will fit in the carry-on, excuse me, in the overhead projector. Not projector, you know what it's called, guys. So what's in here, you can't, I don't know if you can see, so I'm gonna take it out, I've got two things. I've got one of my coolers, and I've got my pressure cooker. So one of, I have two coolers because I'm allowed two things, two carry-outs. So one of my coolers looks just like a purse. And this was given to me by Sharon McRae, the health food coach in Columbia, Maryland, who's wonderful. And what's great about this is this looks exactly like a woman's purse. You can get this at Target or Bed Bath & Beyond and on Amazon. So this is what I use when I want to 
to go fancy places like to the Amundsen Theater and sneak food in because it looks like a purse so they don't check it. But it's actually a cooler and it's made out of cooler material. And so I have in here my ice chip, which I got at the 99 cent store. And as long as this is frozen solid, it will go through TSA. If it melts, you can't take it through. You have to put it in your suitcase or throw it away. So what do I have in my cooler? Well, I've learned to always carry at least 24 hours worth of food with me because I can't tell you how many times, most recently two weeks ago from Canada, that I don't get home on time and it can take up to 24 hours. So I always carry at least 24 hours worth of food with me because in most airports all you can pretty much get is an apple banana and an orange so what do i have with me well i have a lot of stuff that's not perishable but refrigerated stuff i have my favorite apple and the apple but actually this really didn't need to be refrigerated i just prefer it cold i've got my favorite kind of carrots purple organic carrots actually i eat a lot of carrots so i've got uh, two bags of these never go anywhere without a potato this is a pound and a half can of yam I and I probably would take more than one of these, but really I'm not going anywhere, so I didn't pack completely, but always have starch with you. My favorite starch is potatoes or sweet potatoes. Always have enough for 24 hours. Trust me, it, it will save you. So, got my cooler. I'm going to put this back right now. So let me show you what the Instant Pot looks like, because actually you can use the middle of the Instant Pot for storage. So, and if for some reason you're on some kind of crazy propeller jet, where this didn't fit in the carry-on, you could always break these pieces up. I've always gotten it to fit. So what I do is in the insert of the Instant Pot, I use it for more storage of my non-perishables. So for example, one of the things I always take with me is oats. Now, you can buy these. Actually, they sell these at most airports I've been at. This is the unsweetened version of Umqua Oats, the not guilty, so there's no sugar. And all you have to do is add water. I mean, preferably boiling water, but even hot sink water will work. And you could buy these, and these are about two two twenty nine dollars a a container or you can just make your own all you have to do is take a little bag and use my recipe for anytime oats or overnight muesli and just put a half a cup of oats in a bag with some cinnamon maybe some chia seeds and currants if you like that and then when you get to your destination it's easy to find fruit even at the airport you cut up your fruit and you can carry those little boxes of plant milk with you in your suitcase now here's the thing you know you can't get liquids through TSA you're only allowed three ounces of water and I got to tell you that every TSA agent is slightly different, just like every customs agent is different. There, some of them will let things in and some of them won't. And I wish I could tell you there was one comprehensive website where you could find out everything, but every country is different. So the best thing you can do is go to TSA.gov and get the general particulars of what can get through. But you need to know the country you're going to. Now, I haven't been all over the world. I've only been to three different countries, but I've been to them a lot. Asia. South America and North America, meaning Canada. But I've also been to Hawaii several times, and even though Hawaii is part of the United States, their rules are very different. And in general, what you cannot bring into other countries or back to the United States from other countries in general is produce, meaning fresh fruits and vegetables. There are some exceptions, like in Hawaii, if you buy the pineapple at the airport. But in general, you can't bring produce. You can do it anywhere in the United States except Hawaii, but you can't go to other countries generally with fresh fruits and vegetables. However, if they're cooked, a lot of times you can get them in. So for example, when I left Hawaii to come home, I wanted to bring those Hawaiian potatoes because they're so much cheaper at Costco in Hawaii than I'd get them here or get them mail ordered, but I couldn't do it because they will x-ray your suitcases. They can take those out if they see them. However, I could cook them and bring them on the plane. That they allowed. When I just was in Canada, they let me keep my cooked sweet potato, but they took away my apple and my carrots. It's hard to know. You can lie, but if you don't, if they catch it, you get in trouble. So it's probably better not to lie. So just check where you're going for sure and get the rules straight. And now here's the other thing: things like hummus are a gray area. So people that are following, you know, a plant-based diet, especially an oil-free one, a lot of times they'll use hummus as a dip or a snack, which is great. But the problem is, it's sort of like a semi-solid. And I've had TSA agents take the hummus away, and I've had other TSA agents let me keep it, depending on how much it is. So it's always better to err on the side of caution. One of the things John Pierre does is he takes hummus, he makes it, he dehydrates it, and then when he gets to his destination, he adds water and he rehydrates his hummus. So that's a great way to have hummus with you if you care to do that. Now, I've noticed, though, if you take something like hummus, which is the gray area, and put it like in a collard 
leaf wrap or if you use tortillas in a tortilla wrap, if it's part of a larger item or like a salad, they don't tend to take it away as if you have a little container of hummus. One of the things I always travel with are dehydrated snacks that I make myself and I've taught you in the last several recipes how to make nacho cheese kale chips and and granola without any sugar or oil or salt or nuts or, or dates or anything like that. So those are great travel snacks. I don't recommend eating dehydrated snacks on a regular basis, especially if you are trying to lose weight because they are much more calorically dense because all the water has been removed. But having these have saved me many times because I can't always find enough starch, depending on what foreign country I'm in. Like in the Caribbean, all I could get was white rice and bananas and I got pretty hungry. So what I'll do is I don't have the kale chips to show you because I ate them all in Mexico. I literally just got home yesterday, but I still have some of the game, what I call the game changing granola, which is just made from fruit and oats. But oh, it says, and it really is a game changer because it saved my life. These are just really yummy, big, cl crunchy clusters that I can eat as a snack, or I can put my non dairy milk, which I travel with, on and always get some fruit. So it always really helps me to make sure I get enough calories to have some dehydrated snacks with me the granola and the kale chips. Can you tell us, is that one of the um, recipes that you made in a... Yeah, I think it was webinar number three, I believe. The Game Changing Granola was webinar three, and the Nacho Cheese Kale Chips was number five. And yes, you do need a dehydrator, in my opinion, to make dehydrated food. It doesn't really work as well in the oven. You don't get all the moisture out. And, and these last forever, these travel snacks. So th these are real helpful. Now, I don't personally eat dried fruit in general. But I do eat dehydrated fruits and vegetables when I travel. I generally make them myself, but there's some brands that I've also bought that I will travel with. It's funny, these are bananas, but they taste like apple cinnamon. But I will usually take a bag of these for every day I'm away. And I'll take these uh, these types of things, these mat munchies. But the thing is, I never touch these when I'm home. I don't eat these things. These are, in a way, it's kind of like treats because I never get them. So these are the kind of things I travel with. And you can... Put them in your backpack if you don't want to travel with your pressure cooker. Uh, most countries, the plug works. You need to check in advance which countries it doesn't or if there's a converter. Now, I never can have just a carry-on because I'm never going away for less than four days. And so a carry-on wouldn't work because my, my – uh, Instant Pot is a carry-on, but one of the things I always make sure I take is my favorite vinegar, Napa Valley Naturals. Beemon Pot is my other favorite vinegar, and I've uh, mentioned you can get a 10% discount with Chef AJ code. That's a little bit more expensive, so this is my everyday vinegar, so I always make sure I have a bottle of this in my suitcase, and I will put it in a Ziploc bag so that if it were to break, it's not going to get all over my clothes, but I, I don't go anywhere without salad dressing. I don't normally take the whole bottle, depending on how long I'm away. I have smaller bottles I can pour it into. So these are things that I personally take. Now, again, I said you're allowed two carry-ons. So what I had here was that big bag. But if I'm going to be like on a really, really long flight, I'm going to have my second cooler. And this is just a regular cooler I got at, you know, just the, you know one of those Bed Bath & Beyond type stores. And... What do I have in here? Well, it's going to be a lot of food because I'm not going to eat somebody else's food. I've got my nice big ice chip. And by the way, you can use frozen food as your ice chip. So if you were to make some entrees, like a lot of people told me they love my disappearing lasagna from the book Unprocessed on page 100, they will make it in individual serving sizes and freeze it, and that becomes their ice chip. So when they get to their destination, it's very easy to get a microwave in your hotel room. Sometimes you have to pay $5 a day. A lot of hotels have them for free bags of frozen fruits and vegetables that you're going to want to eat at your destination. These aren't liquid, so that can be your ice chip. So one of the things I always travel with is uh, my, my bean burger. This is actually the beanless bean burger that we made in cooking party number one. I always make sure I have these because these are great. You can just microwave these for a quick meal. And I always take the muffins that we made in the first webinar, the blueberry mill oat muffin, except that now I'm making them in pineapple and they're absolutely delicious and amazing. And, and, yeah. and so I, I always make sure I have at least, and these muffins have no sugar or flour. They're, they're uh, starch and starch and fruit is all they are. And I take one for every day that I'm going to be away. And they, I freeze them right after I bake them. And then I put them in my refrigerator. So, that's just what I bring. But let's talk about you guys. Oh, and the other thing is, is if I don't need two coolers, then my second carry-on 
will be my backpack, which will have whatever book I'm reading and just as many, as much food. I mean, people, it, I bring a lot of food with me on the plane. You have to because you just never know. And then you can inspire other people. I've had people next to me eating fried chicken and french fries that all of a sudden ended up loving kale at the end of the flight because they saw me eat it with gusto and relish and they maybe never tried it. I often sneak in a third carry-on, which is my fanny pack right here where I keep my passport and my wallet. And what I'll do is I'll put a big coat over it so they just think I'm pregnant. And that way I, <laughs> that way I don't have to relinquish it. But every now and then I get a smarty pants flight attendant that notices what I'm doing. And if they say only two carry-ons, I'll just hook it on my backpack or something. So then now two becomes, you know, three becomes two. So I've um, been doing this a while, so it's not that hard for me, but let's talk about how we're gonna make it work for you. So a lot of people say, oh, you know, I'd eat healthy if only I could find healthy food in such and such a place. So one of the things I want to entertain the fact is that one of the reasons it's so difficult for people to eat healthfully outside of the home is you haven't mastered eating healthfully inside the home yet. And once you do that and really eat healthfully inside your home, you prefer healthy food and you prefer the simpler foods so that when you go out to a fancy restaurant and you can't get anything but a plain baked potato and a salad, you're not depressed because that's how you've been eating anyway. But what happens is we haven't yet mastered this healthful eating inside the home and so we still have longing and, and cravings and, and, and when other people are getting, you know, more hyper palatable food than us. And so we can't, we don't see there's a possibility that we actually can get the kind of food we need because it seems like a punishment to us. But the reality is, is once you eat healthfully for a long time and get the health and the body you deserve, eating at other people's house and eating at restaurants is actually the punishment. But let me show you what you can do. So I've been giving this lecture for about five years. And the first time I gave it was at Rancho La Puerta in Mexico, a five-star resort where I just got back from teaching for a week. And I've also given it on the cruise ship. And I've given this lecture not just to vegans, because there are people that need to find specific food that fits their reality. Like, for example, people that are Orthodox Jews, they need to be able to find kosher food wherever they go. Uh, parents that have children with celiacs, they need to find gluten-free food. So I've given this particular lecture to many organizations. And what I do is I have a whiteboard, like the one behind me, and I've written on it because this isn't interactive as much as I'd like because I can't see the screen right now what you're typing. But what I do is I ask people in the audience to shout out any place that they go or they'd like to go where they wish they could find healthy food. And I've put quite a few up on the board because these are the ones I hear over and over. Restaurants, other people's homes, weddings, bar mitzvahs, conferences, corporate events, a travel. And so what I've done is I've separated these into three categories. CC, green always means go. NC, red means stop. PC, purple, my favorite color. I'm gonna tell you what these mean. Because I have determined that there really are only three outside eating situations. You could shout out anything, and I've had some really funny things shouted out like the DMV, the bathtub, the closet, jail, a rodeo, all kinds of things, and we could find where they go. But really, what I want you guys to understand is there's, other than your home, there's only three situations out there in the world. There are situations where you have complete control over your food. There are situations where you have partial control or some control, and there are situations where you have little to no control. And so what you want to do is look at the, what, where, your, where your situation is and you want to find a way to get as much control as possible and to turn a situation where you have partial control and no control to complete control. And before we tell you how to navigate these three columns, I want to say that believe it or not, you can have complete control in every situation by doing one of three things. Number one is pre-eating. That's always an option. If you're in a situation where you think you're not going to get healthy food, you always have the option to pre-eat. The second option, which most people look at me like I'm crazy, but having worked at True North now for six years and seeing people who were slender fast for 42 days, not eating is an option. I know you think, well, they're going to think I'm rude or whatever. And what we, we could, if we have time, we'll work on strategies, how you can politely not eat. But not eating is an option. If you're on a flight, well, they don't really serve food on flights like they used to. You have to buy it. But in the old days, you always had a meal on an airplane. If you didn't eat for the five-hour flight from New York to LA, you would live for those five hours. If you did not eat the peanuts, you would survive. And so one of the things working at True Nuts has taught me, even though I personally have never water fasted, 
I've only juice fasted, is that you can skip a meal and be okay. So you can always choose not to eat. If the only choice is something that's going to derail you or make you fat and sick and miserable and have cravings, you always can choose not to eat, which means you're taking a situation where you had no control or partial control and you have complete control. The third situation is bring your food. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's rude. I can't bring my food to a wedding. <laughs> I do. I bring my food everywhere. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to bring it in and sit there when the bride is walking down the aisle, but I always have my cooler in the car. I don't leave my house ever without food, ever, because you never know. A 10-minute trip in LA could take two hours with the traffic. I mean, I've had times where I've, Gustavo knows he was visiting me, where I've been in car accidents. I never go anywhere without my purse cooler. I don't care where I'm going because it's better to have it and not to need it than need it and not to have it. And I would much rather in most cases have my food. Let's talk about situations first where you have complete control. And this is travel. Whether it's by foot, whether you're hiking on bicycle, the bus, the car, I just took the train home from Mexico. Best situation ever, I gotta tell you. Air travel on an airplane work, school, hospital, theme parks, hotels, sporting events, church, potlucks, airports. These are all situations where you have complete control because you can bring your food to all these situations. You really can. Now, of course, getting through TSA, there's going to be certain foods that you cannot bring, specifically liquids, but you're absolutely allowed to bring food to, to all of these places. And I put hospital in there because I have had some clients who have had to go into the hospital. And you guys know that the food that they serve you in hospital hospitals are food that help you get readmitted to the hospital. It's the worst food. A friend of mine went to the emergency room. Um, he was having some chest pain and they diagnosed him with either having, uh, you know, having had a heart attack, they weren't sure the tests weren't done, and or having diabetes. And while he was in the emergency room waiting for the test to be resolved, they fed him dinner. It was beef stew, whole milk, apple pie with ice cream, and buttered vegetables. And this is what they gave somebody awaiting the results for for probably having diabetes and heart disease. And so the thing is, is yeah, if you're in the hospital, obviously you can't be the one bringing it in, but people will bring it in for you. It's completely allowed. And you know, like I put church potlucks because I get that a lot. It potluck is the absolute best scenario. If you can find, if you get invited anywhere, if you can change it to a potluck, you're home free because then you can have what you want to eat and then inspire others to see how good healthy food can be. You need to bring a lot for everyone, but potluck is the best situation of all. We're gonna talk about some of these in just a second, but just know that you need to bring your food everywhere you go. It, I mean, if you're serious about really wanting to, especially if you're somebody that struggles with food addiction and is trying to lose weight, you can never count on anybody to make the food the way you like it. And like I say, especially for myself with my food allergies, it's it's just, it's not life or death in an anaphylactic way, thank God, but it's, it's it, you know, I I was raised kosher, orthodox, and um, I never expected the world to have the food the way I want it. And it's not going to be that way for us, especially those that don't eat sugar, oil, salt, even oil, even vegan. But I tell you, I've been almost everywhere in the United States these last six years in several countries, and I've been able to find food the way that I eat it everywhere except for the Memphis airport. So it is possible. I want to talk about some of these individually. Because airports, I believe that it's PCRM that has an app that tells you the food at every airport. But with Google, you can find out yourself. So in other words, nowadays, a direct flight is very rare anywhere. And you always have a choice of which layover city you want. And one of the things I do, for example, is one of the hubs is often a choice between Phoenix and Las Vegas. And when I'm making my travel arrangement, and for the most part, when you travel, you know you're going somewhere, maybe a funeral cases, you have to go right away. But in general, you're making your flight or somebody else's, you know where you're going. And if you're given a choice of airports, like for example, in Chicago, you have a choice of Midway or O'Hare. In Houston, there's three airports. What you need to do is Google what kind of food is available at all those airports and make an informed choice. So I know that when I'm given a choice of Midway or O'Hare, I pick Midway. Why? Because Midway has a salad bar restaurant with an oil-free dressing that's open until nine o'clock. And I have been stuck at Midway Airport. So that's, it's going to work for me. I know that it, 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 the three airports in Houston, the Bush Airport has a fruit and vegetable, uh, has a juice bar, which means they have fruits and vegetables. So I'm going to be okay there. Las Vegas versus Phoenix are often the choices that I encounter. Well, I would rather be stuck in Las Vegas than Phoenix because I think it's more fun. I have friends there, but more importantly, Las Vegas has a Jamba Juice. I can get a smoothie. I can get a custom smoothie. I don't have to have juice or, or soy milk in there. Las Vegas has a Pee Wee Chinese restaurant 
restaurant where they'll make me oil-free uh, uh, steamed vegetables and rice. They have a Baja Fresh where I can get tortillas and beans and salsa. They also have a Wendy's. Why would a vegan want a Wendy's? Because with Wendy's, you get a baked potato. And so one of the things you need to do is you need to look in advance what the airports have. Don't just show up at an airport thinking you can get something because at Memphis, I couldn't. Most airports do have a banana, an apple, and an orange. And most airports now do have a Starbucks, which means you can get steel-cut oats that are made with water. Be advised, though, that at Jamba Juice, the oatmeal is made with soy milk, and that doesn't work for me being allergic to soy, but also doesn't work for me because they put sugar in their soy milk. So these are little nuances that I've learned while I was on the road. But then I leave nothing to chance. I take enough food 24 hours when I travel wherever I go. Now, hotels are great because you can choose a hotel that has a refrigerator and a microwave, and it doesn't have to be an expensive hotel. It's pretty standard now for like a Marriott and even a Motel 6 to have a small refrigerator, to have a coffee pot, and often to have a microwave. And if they don't have it, you can often ask for it for free or for as little as $5 a day. Now, I've been traveling my whole life, and even as a vegan, I always needed a refrigerator to keep my vegan food. And I remember when I was in my early 20s, I believe I was 22, and I was going to Las Vegas. I would drive there. It takes about four hours, and I would want a refrigerator in my room to bring the food with me that I brought up in the cooler. And I remember asking them, I think it was the Flamingo Hotel or the Barbary Coast, I remember saying I'd like a refrigerator, and they said, I'm sorry, we can't accommodate you. And so I said, well, okay, um, I'm on a medication that requires refrigeration, and so I need you to please uh, store it for me, and I'll be down to the front desk four times a day to get it. And within 10 minutes, a refrigerator was sent up to my room. So don't ask, you don't get. Now, um, in recent times in Vegas, this happened to me, and I was traveling with my friend Shada, and she checked in before me, and she got a refrigerator. And so I said, well, I'm sorry, I have medication. And within 10 minutes, a refrigerator came up that was this big, specifically for medication, like to hold insulin. So somebody has heard this lecture and is now buying these tiny, tiny refrigerators. If worse came to worse, there's always an ice bucket, and I could just be replenishing the ice and keeping it actually in the sink or the bathtub until until I make my destination. When I land now, with it, I mean, if I'm going to somebody's house, it's not as hard because you hope that they're friendly enough that they'll take you to the store. And usually there will be a store. Maybe it's not going to be Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, but even in small towns, there have been Kroger's with organic things. I've not had a problem finding food there. But like I say, now with Lyft and Uber, it you know less than $10 from the airport to the store to the hotel. So I make sure I have my food. In my suitcase, if I'm not traveling internationally, I will pack things like the small boxes of the aseptic cartons of beans that are salt-free organic beans. I will pack my uncooked potatoes that I'm going to be cooking in my pressure cooker. You can get rice and quinoa at Costco and all stores now that's already cooked that you only need to microwave. So my thing is I make sure I have to have enough starch and then vegetables I'll generally buy there. I don't, I don't travel with uh, perishable vegetables in my suitcase, just in my carry-on. And, you know, sometimes I can't get, you know, everything I want, but even at Walmart or Kroger, I can get a bag of frozen vegetables for 99 cents and eat that. So if that's, that's not going to be a problem. Now, sometimes at theaters, like, and I mean, I don't mean like the movie theater at movie theater, they always let me in with this because they don't, and I hope nobody's watching that owns a movie theater. They let me in because they think this is a purse, so I have my food. Not that I'm condoning eating in movies because why would we eat at the dark, but sometimes I go to yoga and then right to the movie, so I have to eat my, I don't have to, but I do eat my dinner there. But when I've gone to like see the Book of Mormon and Wicked, they actually do check your purse, and they say, I'm sorry, ma'am, you can't have that food. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I'm diabetic, and you don't have anything I can eat. And so I hate to lie, but it works, and I've told them that, and they say, okay, no problem, you can't have it in the theater, and they give it back to me in intermission, so I can eat my grapes or whatever I want while everybody else is having alcohol and having their crappy little snacks. If anybody tries to take food away, now theme parks like Disneyland have um, lockers, and they let you bring food in. Now, it's true that you can sometimes find healthy food at Disneyland, but do you really want to pay $6 for like a, a spear of pineapple the size of your thumb? I don't. So I, I've heard, I think it was not very far, but somebody once told me that they wouldn't let them in. They, legally, they cannot tell you you can't bring food in if you tell them you have a medical. You don't have to say diabetes if you're not comfortable lying. 
but you have to say I have a medical condition and, and they can't take it away. They absolutely can't take it away. Um, let's see what else here. Oh, the other thing is, is a lot of times like on the cruise and other hotels, you'll get there and the refrigerator is completely stocked with crap, with alcohol, with chips and Pringles and $6 Snicker bars. That's because they hope that you'll get hungry and you'll just eat it and, and buy it. And so what I do is when I check into a hotel or a cruise ship with that, I call them up and I say, you need to take that out of there. They go, oh, we can't do that. I say, well, guess what? I'm an alcoholic and I'm a food addict and you need to take that out of there. And they will. And guess what? When they take it out of there, I got a big refrigerator now to keep all my stuff in. So you got to do what you got to do if you're serious about eating healthy. And you know, if you're 20 years old and an athlete and slender, I mean, a couple of bad meals at a restaurant or whatever is probably not going to hurt you. But I have clients that are literally one restaurant meal away from a heart attack. And so, you know, this is how yeah, some people have to take this more seriously than others. So complete control is always the best. We talked about how you can have complete control by pre-eating, not eating one meal or having your food with you. And I have gone to weddings and actually said, oh, I left my phone in the car and eat something and come back. We'll talk about this category next because this is probably the most difficult one. And these are the larger events. And unless you're a minister or a wedding planner, you're probably not going to a wedding or a bar mitzvah every single week. But these larger corporate events and conferences, other than the plant-based conferences, are the most difficult because you generally have almost no control. And by that, what I mean is they the food is generally planned in advance for large groups of people and you can't customize the menu the way you would like to do. So if it's, if it's a family or a friend's wedding or bar mitzvah, realize that you're not going there to have the best meal of your life. You're going there to show your support and your love for this person. And if you don't get a good meal, for once, you don't, and that's too bad, but you can try. And the way you do that is when you get the invitation, you clearly know where the event is going to be, which means you can call up and ask to speak to the caterer, and you say very politely and respectfully and just say, look, I don't mean to be difficult, but I'm on a very special diet, doctor's orders, is it possible for you to accommodate me? And either they will say yes or they'll say no. Now, restaurants generally say more yes than no. But these larger events, it's very difficult. Could you imagine if you're going to a conference? I've been to public speaking workshops with 500 people. Could you imagine if they had a customized? It's, it's difficult. So, so they'll say no. But the good news is, is because you've already paid for this conference in advance. They're not making any extra money on you from the lunch. So the server doesn't really care if you don't eat it or don't want it which means I have gone to these conferences and I've brought my own food in. And so have a lot of other people, people that aren't on the diet I am. I've had paleo people and other people, people that eat their own food. The waiter doesn't care because he's not getting a tip from you anyway. And so, like for instance, one conference I did on uh, public speaking, the, the first day it was a Caesar salad, a chicken Caesar. And I said, can you just give me the lettuce? And he did. And I had my potatoes and my rice and my beans and my dressing. And nobody even cared. You know, you think people are going to look at you and like, oh my God, people are more concerned about what you think about them than what they think about you. And truthfully, I look at it as a teaching opportunity because when people see what I'm doing, it inspires them that they don't have to just eat crappy food because that's all that's available. And I can teach them how, and then I can teach them what the healthiest diet is for humans. So it doesn't bother me at all. And if it bothers you, then just don't sit with the people. Go outside and eat your lunch. It's, if you're in LA, it's nicer anyway outside. So with these kind of things, you do have to often bring your own if they won't accommodate you. And here's the other thing, guys. Even if they will accommodate you, it doesn't mean it's going to be right when you get there, whether it's a restaurant, a friend's house, family member. For example, so a wedding I went to recently in Vegas, they said, oh, yeah, it's going to be vegan. I said, well, I can't eat oil. I do what Dr. Esselstyn says. I'm deathly allergic. There was oil everywhere. So, so the thing is, is never assume that food is going to be the way you need it. Always be proactive and always be prepared. Remember that Boy Scout mo motto, be prepared. If you fail to plan, plan to fail. And get used to taking your food everywhere. If you want to succeed long-term on this lifestyle and be slender and healthy, it's pretty much what you have to do. I mean, I know that Dr. McDougall has been able to talk to several restaurants in his town and have special menus, but if you're not in a town like that, and you're traveling, you're going to need to bring your food and you're going to have to get over it. That's just the way it is. Those of you that have children, you know, when your kid was little, you had this bag where you had all their needs met for the whole day. You had diapers and toys. You know, that's just the way. Think of yourself as that infant that needs to be taken care of. So no control. These are things, hopefully, that you don't do every single day or week. And you just have to bite the bullet with these. But you can, again, pre-eat. 
bring your food or choose not to eat. That's how you can regain control. Now, this category is one that we could probably do a whole webinar about. We're not gonna probably get through it, but restaurants and other people's homes. Restaurants are easier than other people's homes because the waiter doesn't take it personally if you don't like it or don't want it. This, we probably would have to do another webinar. Dr. Lyle would be great on this, but let's just talk about restaurants for a while. I used to be a chef at a restaurant, and I can promise you that they use more oil, sugar, and salt than you ever would at home. And even if you say no oil, no oil to them means maybe a little bit less. The cookware has oil. The grill that your veggie burger is cooked on had meat on it. I do not trust restaurants at all. I eat in very, very few restaurants. Uh, there's just there's too much residual oil. There's too much cross contamination. Vegan restaurants generally don't have healthy food. So, it, you know, I mean, I could go to a restaurant and pay fifty dollars for a plain baked potato and a salad. I'm not. Gonna, also, the other thing is, I eat in accordance with the principles of calorie density. I don't get enough food at restaurants, and I'm cheap, and so I will only eat at restaurants under the greatest amount of duress if there is absolutely no other choice. And I feel bad for my skinny husband who can do this because we don't go out for my birthday, his birthday, or anniversary because to me that's a punishment asking me to go to your house or go to a restaurant unless you eat like me. But so what do you do? So how do you make a restaurant? doable. Well, you can do what Dr. McDougall did if you have the time and go to the restaurants in your town that you frequent and ask them to have a healthier menu. Howard Lyman did that in his hometown of Ellensworth, Washington. And I did that here with a couple of restaurants, three of them. Uh, two, I don't know if I'm allowed to name, but one is Sharky's. So I could eat at Sharky's and get an oil-free AJ burrito plate or bowl. So it's possible to do that, it is to have them serve the kind of food you want. And the thing is, is if it sells, they don't care if it's healthy. They, the restaurants are in business to make money. A lot of restaurants will accommodate you. And I have only had two restaurants now that absolutely refuse to make accommodations. And these are the ones that generally say no substitutions on the menu. And that's usually because the chef has an ego of such that he just won't do it. And I won't say the name of them. One was a well-known vegan restaurant. And the other one was this French restaurant where I had to meet somebody. And you know, so I didn't eat the French. I didn't eat it either. Of them. I had a cup of tea. We could do another webinar to tell you what the strategies are, how to navigate the social aspect when you're choosing not to eat. I can teach you guys that. But in general, with restaurants, what you want to do is you don't ever want to be in a situation where you're so hungry and just going to go somewhere. But generally, if you're going to a restaurant, somebody invited you or you invited them. So you know where you're going to go. And so what you need to do is you need to get online and look up the menu. If a restaurant has at least two locations, they're required to have, maybe it's three, their nutritional information online. So you can look at, let's say you're going to the Cheesecake Factory or Chipotle, someplace with more than three locations. Their nutritional information is online and so is their menu. And so what I suggest you do is first try to navigate the menu. And if you don't see anything you like already made, construct it yourself. A good restaurant will do that. So for example, if, if you don't see vegetables on the menu, but you see that there's a spinach omelet, they have spinach. They can steam it. They can give it to you raw. If they have a Tex-Mex wrap with chicken and cheese and beans, you could say, hey, I see you have beans. Can you give me beans? And you know, you can customize the menu. A good restaurant will let you do that. It's always best to call in advance though, because that way you can find out what you're in for. I always suggest you call restaurants during what I call non-peak hours, which is after the lunch rush and before the dinner rush, which is like around two to four. <laughs> and what you do is you say, very nicely you say listen I'm so sorry you know I hear wonderful I first say oh I've heard so many wonderful things about your restaurant I'm so excited to be coming there next Friday night I'm on a very special diet doctor's orders always blame it on the doctor and I don't mean to be difficult but is there any way you could accommodate me and then they're going you're going they're going to ask what your concerns are and then they're going to either say yes or no more restaurants will say yes or no but don't expect to go to the most popular restaurant in your town seven o'clock Saturday night and expect to have everything customized in the way you want it but I've had very good luck calling in advance and seeing what they can do for me and especially if you're not picky you you can probably get something and you know the truth is is most restaurants the chefs or the line cooks were doing the same thing over and over so sometimes if they're not super busy when they get a custom order it actually uh, unleashes some of their creativity i know that uh, dr nathan gershfeld who used to work at true north had these little cards and he and i i I think I still have one in my wallet and it basically says this is what I eat and I don't know where I put my fanny pack and uh, this is what I can eat and this is what I can't eat. You can always ask to talk to the chef but I prefer to do it in advance. 
Let me see if I have that little card. But this worked for some people that uh, that that, you, that they would show this card about what they could be. I don't know if I have it in my wallet right now, but it's a little card that printed up in advance. But a lot of times I have asked the chef uh, to, to custom do things for me. Now, here's the interesting thing. Just because it's on the menu doesn't mean they'll give it to you. And I learned this the hard way. So when I was in Avella, Pennsylvania, a town of about 1,400 people, there was mostly bar food, fast food type restaurants. And I, it, it was a family thing. And this is where we had to eat. And I noticed they had both sweet potato fries and French fries on the menu. So I said to them, I said, listen, I see you have sweet potato fries and French fries on the menu. Is there any way I could just have it not fried. Could you give me a sweet potato or a regular potato, steamed, roasted, even microwave? Would, would you be able to do that? They said, sure, no problem. And so they microwaved a sweet potato and a white potato and gave me some salsa. Was it the best meal I ever had? No. Did it get me through to the next town? Absolutely. So then later on, I was in, I forget where I was. I think it was in Florida, but I was at a, at a hotel and they said sweet potato fries and regular fries on the menu. And I'm like, this is great. So I said, I would just like to have a potato. They said, we can't give you a potato. And I'm like, I don't understand. You have fries. And so the chef came out. Well, they bought the fries pre-frozen in oil and salt. They actually really, truly, they weren't being difficult. They didn't have a potato. But, you know, one of the things I learned at the University of Pennsylvania from my business law professor, Murray B. Dolphman, you don't ask, you don't get. The worst they can say is no. So restaurants are... You know, they're in business to make money, and without the oil and the salt, they're not going to make any money. And so, you know, it, it's really hard. Every time there's been a restaurant that's tried to be healthy, no cholesterol or no oil, there's been two in LA, they've tanked, you know, because like I'm the only one eating there. So, <laughs> so that's the thing. So, restaurants, um, you know, just buyer beware. Now, other people's homes. Oh, boy. This is where we get into a lot of trouble because this is where we have other people's feelings. And this is where we encounter our mother-in-laws and food bullies who made it just for you. And you, especially if you're a woman and especially if you're a people pleaser, and women tend to be, and I've noticed that after working with several thousand people now that the more overweight my client, the more people pleasing they tend to be, this is going to be the hardest thing for you. And this is where watching some of Dr. Lyle's uh, videos at esteemdynamic.org, particularly the perfect personality and getting along without going along is going to help. I'm fairly disagreeable, so I don't have a problem with this. But for those of you nice people out there, this is going to be very, very hard. So what do you do? You take this and you try to make it as much of this as possible. So somebody invites you to their house. So the first thing you do is say, thank you so much for the invitation, assuming you want to go. And then you say, you don't say, can I bring something? That's very nonspecific, and then they ha can say no. So what you do is you're very specific. So, hey, you, yeah, you want to come for dinner, you know, Friday, whatever. You'd say, oh, thank you so much for the invitation. Can I bring a large fruit salad with the mango that I just got at the farmer's market? You make it real, real specific so that the, the host can think about her menu and or his menu, and it's like, oh, okay, that would work. You know, I mean, who's going to turn down fruit? Hopefully nobody. Or, or can I bring a large garden salad with the kale that I just grew from my garden, even if you didn't grow it? Because the thing is, is you want to make sure you have something there that you can eat. And then, of course, if you watch my free webinar about how this eight secrets to superior salad satisfaction, you know that salad's going to have to have some starch in it too for satiety, some rice or some sweet potatoes or something like that. But you always ask and you always say, can I bring a large salad? Now, hopefully they're going to say yes. If they say no, well, then you have a couple options. Your options are not to go. Your options are to pre-eat. Your options are when you get there, don't eat because you just had sudden attack of explosive diarrhea, whatever it takes to get them off your back. Or you could um, ask them on the phone. You could just say, listen, I'm on a special diet, doctor's orders. I don't mean to be difficult, but may I bring my own food? Or, and I'll bring enough for everybody. If they say no, do you really want to associate with those people? One of the things I forgot when it came to restaurant, and this is brilliant, when we run our program, the uh, uh, Ultimate Weight Loss Program live, and, it's, and we run it over a period of 30 days, we, we the, the participants take it even more seriously when we're in this group because those the person that, that – achieves the best results, which aren't always weight loss, but just the, like there's always like a winner and they get like this this huge prize. And one of the things one of the clients did, uh, Janet, this was brilliant, is she had to go out to restaurants. That was part of her job. That was non-negotiable. And so she called the restaurant in advance because she was taking out a client and said, listen, 
I'm on a really special diet and um, is there any way that I could bring my food, come to the restaurant early, you heat it, you plate it and I'll pay you? And the restaurant said, sure lady, we do it all the time. And so she was able to have exactly the food she needed. It didn't look like anything weird or different. And they charged her for the lowest entree on the menu. So the thing is, is depending on how serious you are about this, there is always a way out. There's always options. So I think I addressed mostly everything. Gustavo, if there's um, if there's questions, we can ask them. Isn't the Instant Pot huge for one person traveling? Well, you have no idea how much I eat, so no. But if you are somebody that doesn't eat as much as me, they have smaller they have smaller pressure cookers. But they also have larger pressure cookers, and, and that was the six quart. Now I have the eight quart, which is the one I use at home. I just want to uh, let everybody know that the chat is now open because it was closed. That way we could focus on what you were saying. Oh, great. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I could keep talking, but I'm happy to take questions about so anything. So now can. people can start um, typing questions, and we have about 15 minutes, and then we'll have to close. But I think that your idea of doing another webinar sure. on eating and other people's homes and yeah. restaurants I yeah. think we need to maybe do that right. sometime Absolutely. next month. Yeah. Lots anyway, go ahead, everybody, and type any questions you want to yeah. ask. Uh, the airline never gives you a problem with the pot, right? No. You know, I'll, be, I'll tell you the truth. One time, it was the weekend of the Boston Marathon bombing, and they looked at me a little funny, and they took that little swipey thing. But no, they don't give me a problem. I've traveled with blenders. I've traveled with food processors. The blade always has to go in the suitcase, though. You can't have knives. So see if anybody, ooh, somebody from Costa Rica, lucky, have me over at your house. So it says here that um, one of the questions is, are you really allowed to take that, um, that uh, what is, bottle of balsamic vinegar in your carry-on? Well, you no, said no, that no, it no, wasn't carry-on. Carry -on. No. Only three ounces of liquid in your carry-on. I right. put a Ziploc in my suitcase. In no, no liquid in your carry-on. This goes in the suitcase. But if I'm going to a store where I know there's going to be a Whole Foods, I don't bring it. This is when I'm going to small towns or international travel, which I'm not sure they Well, have. remember, everyone, that this webinar is going to be sent to you uh, as a replay, so you can watch it and pause it and write down things. No, this is a free webinar, so Chef AJ is not going to write everything down and send it to you. Okay. <laughs> so it takes too much time. It's very so you can watch it five hundred times if you want to, and and write down everything you want. Let's see what else. Oh, here's um, a question: What do you cook in the instant pot? I usually find a fridge and a microwave are enough. So yeah, you know, I mean, and, and I can often make it with a fridge and a microwave. But um, for example, like we were just in Vegas for a conference, and so one of the things we cooked was wild rice. We liked it on our salad, and um, I don't know if I could have. I don't think I could have cooked wild rice from scratch in the microwave. I just um, I like to cook my vegetables in the pressure cooker. I, I, I mean, I guess I could do it in the microwave, but it. You know, I'm a, I I I cook my vegetables in it. I cook my potatoes in it. So pretty much everything that I would do at home. I, and you want to hear something funny? Is I spoke at this uh, university a while back, and I could not get any food. And my car has an actual plug, and I actually cooked mushroom chili uh -huh. in my car uh -huh. using the pressure cooker. So I I like having it with me. You know, what is the brand of the bag in which you carry your instant pot? It is called Sack Roots. And it's a wonderful line. I have their books. I have their boots. It's just a really cool non-leather bag, but it's absolutely huge. And it's called Sack Roots. I have their iPad cover, S-A-K-R-O-O-T-S. And it's just a, it's a wonderful um, company, and their stuff is really big. What, uh, da -da, I cannot find the beanless burger recipe. That is in the very first cooking party, number one. What brand of oats do I use? I use gluten-free, and I happen to enjoy the extra thick cut the best by, by Bob's Red Mill. Ebook on Instant Pot recipes, not coming from me. <laughs> uh, name of three categories on the board. Uh, complete control, partial control, and no control. Kristen Since there are people that may be new here, AJ, yeah. just remind them that we have done, you and I, well, you and I have done five 
uh, cooking webinars, right. and they're all on your website. Absolutely. If you go to my website, eatonprocess.com, then you there are all the links to the free webinars and the ones that are low cost where we have all the different recipes and we show the cooking. So uh, how do I find the time to cook when I travel? Well, you know, when I, I put it up and then I meditate for 30 minutes and it, then it's done. No seeds, right? No, no, I don't eat seeds. I mean, I'll eat flax and chia seeds in a recipe. Um... What, what about cooking an oh, event like bicycle tournament? Well, huh, yeah, I, that's a, I'll, I'll think about that. Oh, do I ever carry Dr. McDougall's soup cups? I carry them for my husband, Charles. I don't eat any salt or sugar. And so I have traveled with them, but, um, but I have not uh, personally eaten those myself in a while. But I do buy those for Charles all the time. I just they're, they're a little bit too salty for me. And I know we can put less of the seasoning packet in. But how do I feel about roasted vegetables versus steamed? Well, I think roasted vegetables taste better than anything in the whole world. But I can't roast in my hotel room, and I don't. And roasting takes longer. But um, I think that any I don't worry about any nutritional loss with roasted, and I just don't worry about it because I'm eating so many vegetables. And I think if you roast your vegetables and your potatoes. They take, taste so much better. It's easier to get the healthy food in. But I'm also okay with steamed vegetables so as well. So the uh, calorie, the the, the 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 calories, do they increase when you roast the vegetables? Yeah. So yeah. So anytime you cook a vegetable or a fruit, so for example, vegetables, non-starchy vegetables are 100 calories a pound. When you cook them by any method, they're about 200 calories a pound because now we've taken the water out so I mean it, that's still negligible you still don't worry about that now somebody asked uh, how do I travel with milk they sell little boxes of oat milk almond milk unsweetened at, at my Whole Foods and I, they're in the suitcase so no liquids on the carry-on whatsoever so does almond milk trigger you um, I'm not really using it very often I'm using maybe a splash and I get the unsweetened so no I um, how do you so uh, yeah, yeah. You're often disappointed in restaurants. That's what. I, what is the brand of the purse cooler? Let me look. And also, they have some very, very attractive ones. This brand is Zaza, Z A Z A. And I've seen some that are even fancier than this that really look like a very fancy purse. So it's uh, they're great. And I've had this for for, for about six years now. It was a present from Sharon. And like I said, I've seen this for fourteen dollars. I was just at Bed Bath and Beyond today. So this is this is great. Can you, do you eat beans? Um, well, I'm not eating them right now, but I always used to travel with the little cartons. Uh, how do you wash the iPod in the hotel room? In the bathtub, of course. I use the bathtub for everything. So do you eat your cooked potatoes? You're carrying like an apple. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes I'll slice them, but I just pick up a big old potato and, and eat it, and it's delicious. Uh, can you write your web address, eatunprocessed.com, Gustavo, do that, you know. So, yeah, calorie density, anytime you cook the food, it's your, um, well, actually, the calorie density of things like the grains and the starches, that's uh, those are calorie density cooked. Fruits and vegetables, the calorie density, at least on my chart, is, is raw. So it's going it's going so fast I can't see that. Uh, well, what's the best way to avoid travel-induced constipation or bloating gas issues? That is a whole webinar, constipation, gas, and bloating, and that you need Dr. McDougall to do that. But if I mean, I didn't know you got any more necessarily when traveling, but just, you know, chew, chew, chew very, very well. And, you know, you can also fast. I mean, that, that there's nothing wrong with um, – not eating, you know, for a day. It, you really, you really can, you know. Um, and I've done it, and you know, it, it, Dr. Lyle's videos. Okay, so Dr. Lyle's website is Esteem Dynamics with an S, esteemdynamics.org. Um, can Sorry. you can you eat raw potatoes? <laughs> um, I I don't think they taste good. I have seen them in recipes, but I don't think they taste good or sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. You know, no lentils, tofu, or beans for protein. So, you know, as long as you eat enough calories, you get enough protein. I'm allergic to tofu, so I can't eat that. You know, green vegetables have more protein per calorie than steak. I believe 100 calories of uh, broccoli has 11.2 grams of protein, and 100 calories of steak has something like 5.4. So I don't worry about getting enough protein, because as long as I'm getting enough calories, I'm getting enough protein. I like I believe Dr. McDougall said there's never really been a documented case of protein deficiency in this country, unless somebody was starving or calorie deficiency deficient. I remember I spoke to at Kaiser, there's about 300 doctors there, and I asked them if they ever had seen a case of Pucky Arshore protein deficiency, and one doctor raised her hand. It was a child abuse case, but the kid was being starved. 
So yeah, I don't worry. How can you get a bit of sweetener in tea without sugar? Well, I don't drink tea because I don't drink caffeine. So if I guess if I did, I would probably just soak some dates in water and use that. So I don't. I think if you need to sweeten the food you're eating, you don't like what you're eating, so you're you're eating or drinking it for something else. Is my UWL program lower calorie density? No, my UWL program is exactly the same caloric density as McDougal's Maximum Weight Loss Program. We just maybe emphasize vegetables a little bit more because we're using them to, to help cravings and food addiction, and it's not just about weight loss. But my, my ultimate weight loss program is, is completely based on the McDougal program for maximum weight loss and the health-promoting diet taught at True North. What starches do you eat now? I Well, my favorite starch is potatoes and sweet potatoes, and the squashes, that's just my favorite. They also happen to be the ones in lower caloric density. I find it's too easy to overeat on oats because they're so good. They're more like cake to me than than food, but I'll eat them. You know, when I travel, it's, it's completely different. Now, you don't eat the cat. I mean, you don't count how many calories you no, eat. No, I don't. I mean, a couple of times in my life, because people were bugging me, I plugged it in, and it was like somewhere around like 18, 1900. No, I don't count calories. I only, I in my program, I eat to the left of the red line, which means I'm eating fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, ad libitum as much as I want, whenever I want. As often as I want until comfortably full, and I always say that comfortably full is different than I'm so sick I'm going to throw up full. And no, I don't count calories, and I've never been thinner or happier or healthier eating this way. I But I eat when I'm hungry, and I'm not eating for emotional reasons anymore, and I stop when I'm full. That's also important. So, uh, But no, I don't count calories, and I eat a lot more food by volume now as a slender person than I ever did. But I'm not eating oil and I'm not eating salt, which triggers me to overeat and eat more food. And I'm not eating nuts and seeds and avocado. So, yeah. And you talk about I, I, iodine. Yeah, yeah. So um, they say that, that if you are not eating salt, which I haven't eaten, well, most of my life because my parents already had heart disease when I was born, but I certainly haven't knowingly eaten it since... 2008, I do eat some sea vegetables. My favorite happens to be kelp. I buy the whole kelp from seaveg.com. That's Maine Coast Sea Vegetables. I, I like the smoked apple would, uh, excuse me, not kelp, dulse. Dulse is my favorite. And so a few days a week when I'm eating vegetables, I'll have a few bites of it. It's actually quite delicious. And so um, that's where I'm getting my iodine since I'm not eating iodized salt. And it's really good. Oh, somebody's asking how to connect with Gustavo. I'll give you his phone number. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Why no nuts, seeds, and avocado? I would refer you to YouTube and put in from fat vegan to skinny bitch and watch the lecture I did at the McDougal Advanced Study Weekend. I am a, a recovering food addict, and nuts, seeds, and avocado and the high-fat foods not only kept me fat, but they're trigger foods for me, and I cannot eat them in moderation without overeating them. So, um, you know, and as you know, Dr. McDougal's been saying for 40 years, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And there's fat in everything. I believe iceberg lettuce has 10% of its calories from fat and oats about 20%. So I'm pretty sure I'm getting enough fat. So because I just had my body fat analysis done and I'm as slender as I am, I'm 25% fat. So I know I got fat on me. Oh, yeah, dulse granules. Yeah, dulse, that's very good. Vitamins, uh, yeah, I take B12 as a 40-year vegan. always have. I take it every day so I don't forget to take it. Uh uh, is my breakfast mostly two pounds of veggies or do you add in a starch? I always add in a starch. I just happen to eat my vegetables first because if I don't, then I'll just eat the starch and forget about the vegetables. So, uh, it's your it's your okay. okay. Yeah. That's what it is. Always eat vegetables for breakfast. That's okay. one of the reasons I like taking the pressure cooker because, um, yeah. Well, thank you, James. Yeah, this was fun, you guys. It Has your fun. husband, oh, oh, wait, this is a great question. I, I have to answer this for Celeste writes, has your uh, has your husband always been on board, or did he have to be convinced? So um, you know, I always offer him. I'm very, very uh, generous, and I always offer him two choices at every meal: take it or leave it. But truthfully, I when I met him in nine. When did I meet him? 1992. He was not a vegan. And I told him basically on the first date that if we weren't married in a year, then then forget it. But I also said if we did get married, that the wedding had to be vegan, the household had to be vegan, and the kids, if there were any, had to be vegan. And, you know, um, it, it men, at least the men I know, aren't going to cook for themselves. And so he got pretty tired of, you know, I think one time he might have grilled something and he just, you know, he. so basically he was just 
became vegan pretty much almost overnight after that. And plus, you know, I cook pretty good and the food's good. And he always had permission to eat what he wanted outside. And I think early on, maybe he would have a piece of fish or something, but then he got high cholesterol and the doctor told him to do something about it. And he, you know, he actually, what happened is he heard Dr. McDougall speak in 2001 and he became vegan with the next meal as did my sister. So I really have to thank Dr. McDougall for that. Do, do you recommend a strict list of foods for people with rheumatoid arthritis? I don't, but I bet you could find that on Dr. McDougall's website and probably on the True North website as well. What veggies do I eat for breakfast? Any ones I want. I love my oven roasted ratatouille. I love um, plain steamed zucchini. I, I Any kind of vegetable, but non-starchy vegetables, of course. And I try to get some of the greens in. That's really important, I think. Very good. Well, Chef AJ, I think we're going to close the webinar because it's been an hour. And, um, and I will be sending every one of you an email with a replay link. The link right. that you have now is not going to work for the, for the replay because it was for the live webinar, but it will be arriving by tomorrow. Wow, great. And if you guys have any uh, suggestion for topics you'd like to see us do, please let us know and we'd love to do it. All what right. do I eat for a pick-me-up? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> ah, that's funny. I'm not even sure how to answer that. Um, <laughs> a nice uh, pot uh, sweet potato, potato. right? Yeah. The, answer, the answer to everything is potatoes. And the and answer potatoes is potatoes potato. and broccoli. And you know, the thing is, the sweet potatoes are so good, guys, you don't need to put anything on them. They're no, just you don't. No. Yeah. Well, very thank, good. Thanks for watching, you guys. And uh, thank you so much, Gustavo, the, uh, the webinar wizard. Uh, <laughs> yes. I love that. If you ever get a website, that's what it's got to be. Webinar that's wizard. what it's going to be. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Well, I, as usual, enjoy very much uh, being here with you, Chef AJ, and with everybody here. I hope it helped. And we will be planning another one soon. So Absolutely. be watching. The, uh, I, Remember, eat, eat as many meals at home as you can. Right. That's good. Okay. Thank you, Chef Bye, AJ. Everybody. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye.